right? And so, here we go. Right, starting now and action. Welcome. Today we are going to explore um, character, but we are going to do it with cooking. So today is a character cooking class. All right, and uh, so we're gonna run this a bit. Uh, we are, uh, you're gonna give me just a little bit of time for setup because we're going to be uh, doing this for our studio audience, but also for the audience that will be tuning in as well. So we're gonna have a good time, and uh, so uh, I will be your chef today, and we're preparing a lot of different uh, dishes and things of your different type, but uh, uh, we're not quite ready. We have a couple of stagehands in the back getting ready. We have a couple of things uh, for the studio to get ready, so give me about uh, five to 10 minutes, and uh, we'll be getting started, so. Okay. Five to ten minutes. I'm in a fight, and I almost got in a fight. I got in a fight. Oh! Dr. Seuss! Oh. <laughs> Hello, kids. I am Dr. Glockenspiel. And we have a camera, and we have an audience. So, I'm here. I don't really know what's going on, but it looks like we are cooking. Huh? So today, we are going to cook with science. <laughs> yes! Science! All right, so let's see, um, what do I have here? I mean, I, what, I've got a bunch of different stuff here. I have no idea what I'm doing. That dude in the back, it is probably supposed to be his show, but guess what? I'm going to take it over. How many is excited to cook? <laughs> yes, I am excited. Very excited. So I got to see what I have here. We have, uh, it looks like a pie crust. I don't know much about cooking. All right, so, um, Ah, let's think, what kind of pie do I want to make? <laughs> now, it's going to be epic, everybody. It's going to be an epic pie. It's going to be the best pie anybody ever had, and it has to be different. Nobody can make a pie like Dr. Glockenspiel. So, hmm, let me think here. What kind of pie should I make? It's got to be different. What are some of the things I like? Aha! Pickles, yes! I love pickles. So, oh, wow. Pickles are going to go in the pot. Definitely pickles are going to go in the pot. Now, what else should I do? What else? What else do I like? Ah, eggs. I love eggs. Where to put eggs in the pot? Fortunate they actually have eggs. I mean, if, if, if this would not be a place for cooking if there was not eggs. All right. So we're going to put eggs in the pot. Yes. Eggs and pickles. Mmm, delicious. So. I will decide what goes on later as we get into the pie. So first things first. Um, we need to have eggs, so I put eggs in the bowl, yeah? I know enough about eggs. I make an omelet every morning. Now, egg number uno, numero. Yes, my Spanish is great, no? Ha, all right. There we go, and la da da Okay, egg number one, da 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 Egg number two, ta -da. egg number three, I have no idea how many eggs you need for a pie. But, uh, oopsie, there. Uh, four eggs should be good, I think. Eh? There we go, four eggs for a pie. Good, yes. Ah, paper towels. Mm, the best thing here on the table. I have learned in science that paper towels are good for everything, especially explosions. Take my word for it. I got kicked out of my last lab because of paper towels. I made a paper towel bomb. <laughs> Somebody accused me of paper towel, paper, paper toweling. No, they, they, uh, they accused me of toilet papering the entire neighborhood when I got done, yes? Okay, now, let's see, what do I do next? Ah, of course, I have to mix the eggs. Mixing, mixing, mixing. All right, I'm going to teach you a mixing song, okay? It's about the periodic table. Are you please ready? No, please, no. Ready? Here we go. No. Repeat after no. me. Rocks. Rocks. More rocks. More rocks. And more rocks. And more rocks. You now know the periodic table. Very good for you. Learning the supplement. Okay. So I think we're just about done. Yes. Now for the pickles. That's a myth. All right. Let's see. I was expecting to the periodic table. I can't put the pickles. I can't put the pickles straight in there though because they're too they're too big. It, it, if it's gonna be in a pie, you don't want big pieces. So, you must cut it up, right? Okay. Here we go. All right. Kids, do not try this at home. You may lose the finger. My uncle Joe did that. All right. Let's see. A big lump. This little knife is not going to do. Always go for the bigger knife, children. It's better. Okay. And. I 
something else while that is ready. Wait, wait, wait. I cannot do that. I have to figure out what happens next with the pie. Once we get that eggs. Cherries? No. That's silly. Put cherries on pie. Okay. Me? Mm. Thank you. Uh, of course. Me? You cannot have a pie without whipped cream. Yeah, you silly. Okay. Now, let's see. How are we doing? Ah, we're doing okay. All right. Now, we must keep your working surface clean. I learned this in the laboratory because I kept the marshmallows too close to my Bunsen burner, and that was a bad experience. My s'mores did not taste good. Okay? You should teach me how to stack all these things. I need to have a test on this tomorrow. Like an actual science. I have a test on this. That I what? Record. About Bunsen burners? Yeah, all of that stuff. Oh, okay, good. Well, you already know the periodic table, so. Uh, I, know t I know two of them. So, so <laughs> we have a good studio audience here today, but all of you people at home, I want you to know that I am a certified incrementologist. That is my field. No. no, I am I am a certified incrementologist. That is true. It is true. I study increments. Incrementology. Mm -hmm. How far people are from each other. Right now, you are about as far as you are from me. So there we go. See how good I am? Yes. Alright. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, doing pretty good, but uh must mix. Must mix. Alright. Keep going. <laughs> okay, now, um, I have a question for you. I need your help because this is going to be the best pie anyone has ever had. You want to help me? Okay. Everybody can help me. I need to help from my studio audience. What I need you to do is help me name my pie, okay? I need you to help me name. So give me some names. Disappointment. Nasty. Disappointment. That is a terrible name. Disappointment. We need to go back to school. What? Another one. Nasty pickles. What? Nasty pickles. Nasty pickles. Those two words should never go together. Ever. Okay, Nick, mix again. Keep Keep thinking. I'm not Atomic bomb. Yeah. Bomb it. Bomb is a good name. Bomb is a good name. No, the best pie. That is terrible. No, I want... The best pie. The best pie. Hmm, that has that has merit, yes. No, it's not. But it's too generic. Everybody everybody would like the best pie. Dream big. Dream big. Dream big. Oh, that is good. Or stay positive. The best dream pie. Make today great. Okay, dream big. Dream big will be the first part of the name. I need second part of the name. Second part of the name. Anybody? Dream big. Dream big. Dream big pie. Dream big pie. Just no, 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 no. More Green than that. Big, you got you don't this. See me. No. <laughs> mm. Green big, you're disgusting. Exactly. No, no, no. How about, how about, dream big? Never give dream up. You're eating a cloud, huh? Or just dream, 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 dream loud. loud. Dream big is cream loud. Dream big mm. is yeah, cream loud. Yeah, yeah. You're not yeah. good enough. It only works. Dream big, dream big you're not good enough. <laughs> I want people to be Sparkle inspired. You're never gonna make it. Dream okay. big, sparkle every day. I, it looks like the pie is, I mean, they the pie. Be Green yourself. Big, I could squeal like a pig. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, my glasses are fogging up. Okay. This dude beat up this girl's pig. <laughs> what? He's what? He, like, he, what? <laughs> he beat up a girl's pig. Okay, guys. 
It looks like it's done. Uncle, her uncle spanked the pig and made it squeal. Oh, boy, it's very hot. Dead. Be careful if you make this at home. Just <laughs> quiet, <laughs> studio audience, quiet. I'm Sorry. talking to the crowd now. Um, the crowd, be careful if you crowd. make this dish, okay? It will be delicious, of course, but it is also very hot, okay? It is very hot. So now, we're going to transfer it into the pie crust, like so. Oh, he actually cooked eggs in the microwave. Wow. Yeah. Did you know that? I didn't know you could cook eggs. I did that. Okay. So spread it out evenly. Now here's the important part. Everybody pay very close attention. Quiet. You must press it down because if it is if it is oh, not flat, this is going to be a pie. If it is not this flat, this is some kind of good food. Okay. Scrambled egg pie. Now the <laughs> okay. Now the last important <laughs> part. I'm gonna get it. Now the last important part. Scrambled egg pie. pie. Good name. The scrambled this pickle pie. This smells like my cafeteria. Me <laughs> big. It is the scrambled pickle pie. Yeah. Yes. yes. I think we have our name now. Okay. Now let's throw this away. All right. Now everybody be careful. All right. Here we go. Safety goggles on. No. Whoa. Jonathan. This is like a ruin, like oh, meat pie for This should be a, like... This is like a school cafeteria. You should go to jail for this. For this is like a school cafeteria I'm dessert. 911. Yeah, this is like a school cafeteria. It's already prison food. It's actually washing food. And whipped cream on a pie. How tall are you going to make it? Are you like really tall? We get pizza. It's taller. Yeah. Yeah. Are you definitely going to have pizza now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, everybody, everybody, buy it, please. Buy it, please. Now, now this pie is finished. Let's get rid of the crumbs here. All right. Now, everybody, look very carefully at this pie. Okay. I need you to look at this pie very closely because in a moment when I cut into it, it will look different. I need you to see it as it is now. See, this is important. Okay. Look carefully. Now, what I'm going to do is take a knife here. And I'm going to cut a piece. You good? I don't know. No, this lady's trying to build this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's take a piece out. You're so rude, baby. I need a plate, yeah? Teresa, don't throw this thing down. Okay. Wow, it looks so different. Wow. Try it. Can't believe it. <laughs> that actually looks very good, don't no. you think? No. No. Oh, I want to try, try it. it. All right. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is Jonathan! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so delicious. Ew. Man, this is like a carnivore. Yeah. Now, this is, this is so good. Now, you have to, you have to try this, okay? I'm not trying it. But first, I, but first I have to talk, but first I have to talk, I have to talk to my, uh, to my agent and see how much I need to sell this for, because I'm not giving it away for free. It is too good. Oh, I'm trying to go talk to you, agent. This is so delicious. All right, now. Uh, I'm going to take this thing to eat some more. I, okay, I will. Um, oh, this is so good. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Okay, that's it because I don't want it. He says to talk to his agent. He needs to talk to his therapist. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Fuck and spill. Hey, fuck and spill. What are you doing? I was the, you know, the being on the TV, you know? You're not supposed to be in there. This is my show. I told him 50. Go, go to your room. <laughs> hey, go, to your go to your room now. He looks like he was 80. Fine, I, I go, I go, fine. I go, I go, fine. I go, I go. Ego. Ego. Ego, Ego, Ego. That's a good meme. Come on, come on, come on. Talk from British. I'm not British. British. I'm not British. You can say it sounds like. British. You can say it. British. Uh, you be surprised how you can say I'm British. You don't sound British. You sound country. What's that? Other? You sound white. You sound <laughs> redneck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we're about red. What in the world happened? He made egg. Oh, apparently. He made green green pie. Big egg scramble pie. He made the corn pie. Egg scramble pie. It's nasty. He made cancer. <laughs> he made a mess. I, I apologize for this, guys. I... Better. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Taste the pie. This is I do not want to taste this pie. From the look of it, it has disgusting. pickles in it. Hey, you like pickles. pickles. Yeah. You like pickles. Um, by the way, I do like pickles, but not in my pie. That's no. Okay. That's not even That's pie. Not okay. That's not even pie. I, no. I said, guys, I apologize That's for that. Disgusting. But let me move this out of the way. Um, Are you really gonna eat that tonight? Mm. No, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna touch that. Okay. Disgusting. <laughs>
I need to run most of my utensils for cooking, but okay. This will be right if I turn it over. Okay. Well, but this actually, we've been talking, we're going to be talking about character, so this actually plays in very, very well into, uh... No, sit down. Into the lesson Wait. today while we're cooking, so let me go ahead and, uh... Go ahead and get into that. So, our scripture today, actually, like I said, it goes in pretty well. Our scripture today is 1 Samuel 16 and 6 says, And it came to pass, where they were come, uh, rather, when they were come, they came to look, uh, he came and looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord is anointed it before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, pay attention, guys. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, that means his outward appearance, or the height of his stature, how tall, how muscular he is, because I have rejected him. But the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, on the outside, but God looketh on the heart. So, we're talking about, we're taking a look into what it means to truly have character. So actually, this pie makes a very good example. What I mean by that is, looking at just the outside, now the whipped cream starts to go down, but if you were to see just the pie as it was when it was completed, when it was finished, from just looking at it, unless you knew what had gone into it, it would look like a good pie. It would, look, it would look like something that was ready to eat. Well, the thing is, is that what God was saying is that it doesn't, God's not saying, I don't care about the way you look. A lot of people use that verse and say, well, see, God don't care about how you look. That's not what he's saying. What he's saying is when he looks at your character, God does not look at the whipped cream on top. He looks at what's on the inside. He looks at what is inside of your heart. When God judges character, when God judges a person, he does not look at whether or not they look the part, whether they look like a Christian. The outside will tell you something about the person because he says man looks at the outside. When you look at a pastry, when you look at a pie, you look at the outside because before you cut into it, you cannot see the inside. But when you're walking past that pie, that pie cabinet at the, oh God, at the store or when you go by that, that, that area, that place in the store that has all those cookies and cakes and pies, you look at the outside of that cake and you're like, mm, that looks good. But you cannot see what's on the inside of it. For all you know, there might be a dead armadillo on the inside of that cake. Ew. <laughs> so, my point is, is that when you look at this, now it's like the little to do it. But at first, it looked okay. But when you see what's on the inside, you don't want it. Pay attention, right? You don't want to eat what this what this pie is made out of now, because you know what goes into it. So the thing is, is that. When you're living for God, when, we have, when we're supposed to have godly character, does God want to have you as representing as his child? For example, does he want everybody to think, okay, there goes a real Christian person just because you look right? Or is God looking for a Christian when God's looking for somebody that has the inside right as well as the outside? Okay, so when we're, as we talk about character, as we get into this, um, oftentimes... We look at people and we judge, okay? We're going to judge by the way that they look, okay? The Bible says that man does look, uh, judge based upon appearance. For example, there is um, a police officer, for example. His life oftentimes depends upon his judgment, what he sees. And by uh, understanding what threats are. Brother Andrew might be able to, uh, you know, confirm this, but they are trained to to uh, see threats. They're trained to see and categorize uh, people based upon their appearance to predict who the threat's going to be if something happens. They're trained based upon appearance to see if that person's going to be a threat. So if you have some, if you have some dude that's walking around like this and he's got a wife beater on and his pants are halfway down around his ankles and, and he's got his hat all sideways and he's walking like an ape. Camera. Well, guess what? That cop's going to yeah. look and say, that guy's a potential threat. If you have another dude that's dressed like Brother Andrew standing over there with his hands in front of him like this in, in a relaxed posture, not as much of a threat. Not going to be the first person he looks at for, to, as being a threat. Because guess what? Man does judge upon appearance. Well, the Bible, people say, well, see, God doesn't care about you look like. That's not, that's not true. Because God wants man to see you and see you as a child of God. But what he is saying is that your character is not judged based upon how you look. Because guess what? I can look at you and I cannot tell whether or not you're an honest person. I can look at Teresa right now and be like, hi, Teresa. And I can think, oh, she's a, she's a, she's a nice person. 
<laughs> but guess what? She's not mine. I cannot tell things about her character based she on how she looks. I can't tell if she. I can't tell if she's honest. I can't tell that if uh, she steals or not based on how she looks. Oh, now I know Teresa. I know Teresa doesn't steal because I actually know more about her than just how she looks. But if I met her on the street, I couldn't tell just by looking at her whether or not she was. Because I cannot judge her character by how she looks. I can predict some things. I can't judge her character. Okay, with that said, we're going to move on. Um, Matthew chapter 7, verse number 15 says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? So here's, a, here's another thing, okay? Because we're teaching with cooking, right? So before I do that here, um, I have, yes, here they are. Bless you. Bless you. Now, the Bible says to be careful about people, they said that are wolves in sheep's clothing. What that means is the Bible said the people of God are sheep of his pasture, that he's our shepherd. So that means that if there's a sheep in a wolf's clothing, that means that there's somebody, the outside looks like a sheep, but on the inside is really a wolf. Okay? So, um, I got two cookies here. Wait, wait, you're cooking in different bags. Oh, yeah. It's not like penguin. All right, quiet, please. Now. Oh, yeah. So, who wants a cookie? Me. 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 We got a lot of people that want a cookie. That's too much sugar. <laughs> no. Okay. Um. Shannon mentioned you wanted a cookie earlier. So, uh, I want you to come up here. They have two cookies. All right. Now, I want you to be able to tell me what the difference is between these two cookies because they look identical. I took them out of different bags, and I know they are different. They're both sugar cookies, but there's something different about these two cookies. That one's bigger. That one's bigger. Okay, so um, from look, just looking at it, you see one that's bigger, one that's smaller. All right, so I want you to take a bite out of each one and then tell me what the difference is between them. What Nothing, it's not going to hurt you. You're good. Oh, she's going to die now. <laughs> oh, she's about to pass out. Who it is? Oh, she's going. <laughs> Something's wrong with that cookie. Okay, so what is the difference between the cookies? This one's better. Okay. <laughs> why is this? Why is this one better than this one? Do you know? That one has a different flavor. Okay. So, from the look, they look the same, don't they? All right. But they are different. One has, as a sugar cookie should, sugar on top. The other one does not have sugar. It has salt. I knew it. Yeah. So, see, I hate it. what I tell now, you. Oh. Now, listen, guys. So the thing is, is that, and you can take your sugar cookie. I, you don't want. Okay, so pay attention, guys. <laughs> Teresa, Teresa. <laughs> I'm talking to each other. Hey, I'm talking to you. Pay attention. I don't have a lot of time, guys. I still got a lot more to do. So we have a cookie that has sugar, a cookie that has salt. But when you looked at them, they looked identical. So the Bible says like me, there will be. What I did. Shh, quiet. So the Bible says that there will be people that would be wolves in sheep's clothing, that they would look just like the other sheep. But the Bible says that um, you will know them by their fruit. And it says, um, do you get grapes from a thorn bush? No. Or do you get, or do you get, or do you get figs, which is another kind of fruit? Let's say, say apples. Do you get apples from a bramble bush? I don't know what that What's is. What's a bramble bush? It's like, it's like a tree. So, so the thing is, is that, pay attention, guys. What he's saying is you'll know them by your by their fruit. What he's saying is that their appearance, their appearance does not is not a good judge of whether or not they are a child of God. But instead, the way you should judge a person is by their character, about how they act, about how the person they are. So, for, to give you an example, Sister Acres. Now, if, let's let's say just for the sake of an example for a minute, let's say that. There was somebody that looked exactly like Sister Akers, okay? Obviously. Exactly like Sister Akers, okay? Let's say that, th that this person even dressed like Sister Akers. But the reason why people love Sister Akers is because Sister Akers is who she is. It's because of her character, because she loves people, because she's a woman of God. 
because she cares about people and willing to take the extra mile and, and, and do things for people because she makes people feel at home and love. We call, uh, a lot of people call her Mama Acres for a reason. It's her character. It's her character that makes her who she is. So if there was another person that looked, let's say she had a twin, okay? A, 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 a identical twin, right? But that, per, but that person was rude. That person was a what was a diva and, and just had a Karen, if you will. All right. Oh, that's oh, that's oh, that's oh, that's oh. That's his car. That's so, my <laughs> quiet guys. Quiet guys. Did she watch this Joseph. channel? Well, guess what? Just oh. because she looked like Sister Acres, just because she looked like Sister Acres, does not does not mean that she is automatically a Christian. We know that Sister we know that Sister Acres is a Christian, but it's because of the character she has. It's the way she acts. So we're going to be talking more about that, but here's the important thing, okay? So many people focus on the, the outward appearance. So many people think about, well, if I, can, if I can get people to think I look right or if I go to church and I'm accepted as a church member, then everything's good. But you're wrong because God is not looking for just an outward appearance. God is looking for a heart that pleases him, okay? So... You good? Let's move this out of the way. All right, do you need more to drink? Okay. All right, two more, two more scriptures. Not right now. Okay, so two more scriptures, guys. Quiet, please. Second Timothy three sixteen. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Pay attention, it says, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What it says is that thoroughly furnished means that you are completely ready for the work of God, that you are uh, completely filled, in other, way, in other words. So, um, think of it this way. You have a car that's completely kitted out, or you have a game station, that one for Braden. You have a game station that has all the memory you need, has the fastest processor. You have a screen with the highest definition uh, out wow. and up to date, and uh, good Wi-Fi. And if you have you have cable internet, all right? Wired. Okay, yeah. You have you have Cat Six internet. Okay. Ooh, you're running, six. <laughs> yeah, you're running high you high speed chance. internet. All right. So, um, with all that, okay, it's completely <laughs> kitted. That's what it means to be fully furnished. The next scripture, pay attention, it says, 1 Corinthians 11 and 1 says, Be you followers of me, even as I also am follower, rather, I also am of Christ. Okay, so, well, that's it. We're going to do some some more cooking here. It's better be good. This is where we get to the cooking part of this. The actual cooking part? The actual cooking part. We ain't making poison this time. What was the other one's name? It better be good. Dr. Glockenstiel. Yeah, I made that S nasty. How about Professor Glockenstiel? Doctor and professor can be used interchangeably. Okay. Now, so, um, as you go through this, when we're talking about it, right? So, uh, the Bible says that the Word of God is what teaches us in order to be more furnished. So, we have a pie, uh, we have the basis, okay? We have the foundation. All right? So, if you guys uh, repent of your sins, if you guys are baptized in Jesus' name, you fill the Holy Ghost, you have a, you have a foundation. That's, the, that's where you build your life upon. But on top, but you have to... In order to have a, a true relationship with God and who God wants you to be, you need to build on top of that foundation a life that pleases God. Okay? There's, there's more to it. There's holiness. There's character. Do you need to go outside, buddy? You need to go outside? You're dying. Shush. Okay? All right. I got it. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a cherry pie. Yeah. A cherry pie. What if I don't like cherries? I love cherries. Cherries are good. I love cherries. Cherries, cherries. Okay. cherries be busted, like busted. Uh -huh. All right, so we got some cherry filling here. Let's yeah. see. Oh, yeah, that's I don't like fake cherries, and those look like fake cherries. Look, cherries. Those are fake cherries. I know it's fake cherries. So These cherries. are our maraschino cherries. I want fake yeah. cherries. I love it. That, my mom, those are fake. Uh, my mom yeah. likes those cherries, but so she hates maraschinos. Yeah, they're all sick. Yes. Oh, you should, on the video whenever you're editing, you should make it zoom in and make like it look more satisfying. Ever. Okay, let's see here. We're going to spread this. 
I would actually figure just like this. Okay. Right, I think that's enough <laughs> filling in here. Okay. Now, <laughs> Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ, okay? So the idea here is that the Bible will tell us what, what character we're supposed to have, what character traits we're supposed to have. It'll tell us that we're supposed to be honest. It'll tell us that we're supposed to uh, be people that love one another. It'll tell us that we are supposed to be people that um, that have a good reputation. It'll go on and talk about the different kind of character traits. We're supposed to be humble. That we're supposed to um, be honest. We're supposed to be people that are are not brawlers. Basically, we don't pick fights with people, or we don't. We're not in a, uh, a person that uh, makes people want to fight Good with point. them. Good point. That's rude. Okay. So, <clears throat> but here's the thing. Paul said, "Follow me as I follow Christ." Pay attention, guys. If I'm gonna start calling people out, I'll give you one warning from now on. If you get a warning after that, you're being sent out. Okay. Sorry. I'm feeling disrespected because you guys are all talking. All right. So. The thing is, is that we have a pie here with a pie filling, but the problem is, is that um, when there, sometimes we have the Bible and it's hard to know how to apply it. It's hard to know how to live it. It's somebody can say, well, don't, uh, to be humble. But what does it actually look like to be humble? Well, we follow people's example. We, we see people that are humble and we act like them. We see how they live it and that gives us understanding of how to live it. So, when we're cooking, you could take graham crackers and you could just crush them up inside this bag and put them in here. The problem with that is, is we're talking about cooking, and you have somebody that teaches you how to cook. You have a recipe. A recipe will tell you the ingredients, what goes into the pie, but it'll also tell you how to prepare the pie. And how much. But if you have a professional chef actually telling you, or showing you, I should say, how to cook something, they're going to give you tips. They're going to show you how, they're going to actually show you in detail how to prepare a pie. So the thing is that if you crush up these graham crackers, you have pieces that are, are not uniform. You're going to have some pieces that are bigger than others. And so if you want a smooth... Uh, if you want a smooth amount, a smooth powder of graham cracker on top of there, we're gonna stick it into a food processor. Okay, so we should only need about three crackers. So we don't want, we don't need a whole lot, and we don't want to add them all at once. Otherwise, our food processor will get overloaded. So we're just gonna put a couple in there and then keep going as we go. All right, so we'll plug this into power here. <coughs> give us a little bit of contrast from that uh, gooey sensation you're going to get from the uh, from the cherries and if you had all gooey it would no you want a little bit of difference in texture a little bit of change in texture is going to uh, make it so that it's more pie like than just gooey okay because we're not going to put a top on this we're not going to put a, 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 a crust top on top of it okay so next we're going to take and we're going to put some, <coughs> why that, uh, this will spread cold. better. Okay, so then the bottle, mm -hmm. you won't lose the cherries? Nope. That's not beneath until it's green. Okay, so I like chocolate <laughs> Okay, 
So there we go. Now, uh, what we're going to do now is add some chocolate on top. The bus I'm gonna get that. Look, like gonna be <laughs> The right, we need to test Bursting. to make sure that we should name this one. <laughs> okay, so we should name it the best. What are you doing that for? By Johnny. It actually comes out. <laughs> All right, so now. Um, these can be taken off, but to burn, yes. Can I have the rest of the whipped cream? Whipped cream and cool it? Yeah. Uh, in a minute, yes. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to garnish it with cherries. Did you wash your hands? Yes, I did. <laughs> Two minutes. Oh. <laughs> we're going to garnish our cherries here on top. I thought it was, what's garnish? Um, what's it's basically for looks. Give it, give it some. Like some pizzazz. Some pizzazz. Take word for it. Okay. We're going to split the cherries in half. I'll cut my finger off if I did that. <laughs> yeah, because you're a dodo bird. Hold on, I'm trying to do that. And it's down because my pocket is down. You know how there's like just one more shot. Alright, guys, so pay very close attention now because I'm going to explain some things here real quickly. Okay? So, with. Quiet, please. Alright, so with the cherries being finished, um, we talk about character following God and applying character to our life. Well, the thing is, is that here's the question. The inside, we're finishing the outside. The outside right now is beginning to look pretty good. And as we begin to put pieces of cherry on top of here, Ooh. it's going to begin to look even better. But the problem is, is that we began to add the garnishing to this, is that it is not going to change what's on the inside. So the question of true, the true test of character is who are you and what do you do when nobody's looking or when there's nobody around? Because we can teach you things in church. We can teach you about what's important in the Word of God. We can talk to you about how to live for God and how to do things for God. But the true question is, are you a person, are you a person of character at home? And what you do and how you live? Okay, because we've been talking a lot about character. Our class has been about character. We're going to continue talking about character traits. But it does absolutely no good if you do not put it into practice. So the question is, we can talk about the importance of prayer. We can talk about being the, the importance of, of watching what you do, watching the kind of communications. But the question is, what kind of YouTube videos are you watching? How, how, what, what are you getting on, on your social media? Who are you talking to on your phone? What do you, what do you, say, to you, what do you say to your friends when you're, when, you're around, when you're around your friends? Pay attention, guys. When you're around your friends, are you saying things around your friends that you would not want? let's say, Sister Akers to hear, or Pastor to hear. Because the question is, character's character. It doesn't matter where you are. Because the thing is, is that we like to be one way around people that we want to be a certain way around. And then, like something else, we're around somebody else. But that's not character. What that is, that's just the icing on top of the pie. That's not character. True character is what's on the inside. That never changes. So if you don't develop your character now, because all of the ingredients takes work, the preparation takes put it into it. It doesn't just happen. Just because you, just because it looks like on the outside does not change what happens on the inside. I can make that pie look like this pie on the top, but it does not change what's on the inside. <coughs> so, with all of that said, guys, we're gonna say a word of prayer and close this up, and I'm gonna give you guys who wants pie. We have cookies as well. But this is what I want you guys to think about. This is what I want you guys to really. Put into your heart. Ew. Right, pay attention really close because I'm closing this out. I'm going to pray. Here's the question. Are you guys Christians based upon your top? Or are you Christians in the neck? Are you Christians on the inside? Is your character Christian? Mm -hmm. All right? That's something that everybody has to continue to develop and work on. But if we lose track of that, if all the stuff I'm teaching is going up here, but never coming down here, if all of it is, is it applying on the outside. So I'm going to pray when people see me, but I'm at home. I'm not, I don't care. Nobody's going to know whether I pray or not. There you go. That's the question. Because God does not judge based upon what people see. God judges based upon their heart. Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help us, Lord God. We want to be who you want us to be, Lord God. We want to follow you, Lord God. You are faithful, Lord Jesus. I thank you for all that you have done. Your many blessings, your power, Lord God. I pray that the word of God move our hearts, change us, speak to us. I pray, Lord God, let your word help us to become the people you want us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you could stop the video for me, brother, and give me just a minute.